So a tangent line is a line that just touches a curve at a point. So here we have a parabola, a y equals x squared, and there's a straight line that just touches right at that point. So it's tangent to that point 1, 1. So how do we find the slope of that line? Okay, well, clearly that line has slope and it just touches at that point and the curve is what we have information on. Okay, we have y equals f of x, we have an x and y coordinate there, and clearly that, if I take a look at that line, that line has definite slope, right? It's got rise, it's got run, okay, so it has slope. Okay, so I want to calculate that slope. The problem is, when I calculate slope, so slope is, looks like this. Slope is the change in y divided by the change in x. Okay. Well, the change in y at that point ends up being 0, and the change in the run, or the change in x, is going to be 0. And that clearly has slope, you know, approximately, I don't know, let's say, let's say that's approximately 2. Okay, I, I, don't, I don't know if it's exactly 2, but it looks like about 2. But it clearly has slope, so I'm not even going to... We know that this 0 over 0 equals some finite number. So how do we solve this 0 over 0? Now, this would have been a problem a little while ago, but now that we have limits, we have limits to be able to deal with the 0 over 0. Okay, so let's see what's happening here. So basically, what we want to do is we want to see how we get to the 0 over 0, because that was, that was a limit, right? It was basically limit was telling us how are we getting to that zero divided by zero and if it would tell us where it was going it could never get to this zero over zero but told us pretty much where it was going to go if it were allowed to go there okay, and that's what this is pretty going to be great for right here so we just need to figure out how is it getting to that zero over zero so to do that we're going to start here so we're going to start with this point p we want to find the tangent of point p and we're going to start with point Q1 on the curve. And as we have that point P and point Q1, okay, we definitely have rise and run between those two points. There's my slope triangle. Okay, we clearly have rise and run. Um, and that slope there is not a great approximation to the black slope, right? That black line is our tangent line. Okay, so but, you know, it's our best guess so far. But what we can also do then is we can actually move that point a little bit closer to point Q2. And point Q2 clearly has a rise and run that is finite and calculable. Right? We can definitely calculate the rise and run between those two points. And this red slope, although it's not a great slope, it's better than the blue one in approximating that black slope there. And we can, in fact, continue this process. We can say, well... If Q2 is better, well, what about some point even closer? Okay, that has some finite amount of run and rise. Okay, we'll call that Q3. That Q3 has a finite rise and a finite run. And we can zoom in, you know, we can see that there's actually, and we can even get closer than Q3 and get even a better approximation of our slope. And we can do that all the way until we get to right to the point P where we end up with 0 over 0 and then everything flies apart. But just before we get to 0 over 0, we can see that the slope of that secant line is approximating and getting very closer and closer to the black tangent line. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to take this slope ratio and bring that point closer and closer and closer and use a limit than to do that 0 divided by 0. And so we can see that in this animation that if we look at that animation, we can do that with that animation as well.